When we come, we speak to you as brother. And you will tell the truth as brother. If you do not tell the truth, we beat you. And if you do tell the truth, we beat you. So tell the truth! <laughs> now! No. Prisoner information is not released, there is currently no visitation authorised. Put the up. progress is being made in this country and I, I think there is uh, far too often a focus on the things that maybe are still a challenge or things that aren't going exactly in the direction we wanted to and this is an opportunity to show you what a collective effort of the coalition force and the Iraqis uh, most recently can do for this country. I, I facility was looted extensively after Saddam in October and November of uh, 2002 opened the doors and let the prison population out on the streets of uh, Baghdad. Uh, we're going to take a walk through several different sections of the uh, facility. In the hard facility, the structure itself, there's about 240 prisoners. And it's the capacity, of course, right now with the parts that have been renovated is about 600, but we're moving them incrementally. The other facility we have on the grounds of Abu Ghraib is Camp Gansi. That's right. Gansi, Camp Gansi, G-A-N-C-I. And it is a, uh, a quick response when you have criminals and you don't have any facilities where you can uh, hold them securely and confine them. Uh, Gansi is a blueprint for a hasty confinement facility that the military can put up once the ground is level and prepared. Uh, it's concertina wire with high-speed wire and lighting and guard towers, and we can confine large numbers of prisoners very quickly. How do you characterize criminal? I mean, people who shoot at uh, American forces would be called criminal, uh, or is that security detainees? No, it's security detainees. Um, actually, I get, I, we get confused as well, but I can tell you that because the coalition force uses different versions of the same terms. If the, the prisoners that are here that we call civilian criminals are Iraqi on Iraqi crime. It's misdemeanors, petty theft, uh, curfew violations in some cases, murders, rapists, uh, the real criminal element. Security detainees are detainees who have attacked or participated in an attack against the coalition. And they're not here? Uh, no. We have a let me correct that. We have a small population of them here, but they are kept in a separate uh, location. In the whole city. Yes. How, how many would a small population? Less than a dozen. Less than a dozen, okay. Uh, in, in the country, in, throughout Iraq, we have um, just under 10,000 prisoners total, and approximately 4,000 of them are still categorized as detainees, uh, security detainees. Do you talk to them, General Kropinski? Do you get to know them? Do you 
say good morning to them? Do you? I do. Uh -huh. um, and the security detainees also? Um, not as often. But you do talk to them? Yes. And they're friendly towards you? Yes. We, uh, as a matter of fact, that's one of our main concerns when we come to any of the facilities. We ask, are they relaxed? Are they comfortable? Are we taking care of everything they need? So we had them in our uh, hasty confinement operation. The MPs are out there in 130 degree weather, confining them, detaining them, trying to make life as uh, tenable as possible. And uh, we started to review some of the records. The magistrate system was back in place where we were releasing prisoners uh, as we could as the cases were cleared by the magistrate system. So they went out to Gansey and they called off a list of about 30 names. And they said, uh, get on the bus because we're, you're being released. And they cheered and we, were, we really feel very good about that. So then they called out another list of names and it was about 25 or 28. And they said, get on the bus, you're being released. And they were very happy. Then they called out another list and it was about 20 names. And they said, but you're not being released. We're taking you inside to Abu Ghraib because they were the hard criminals. They were the murderers and the rapists, the most serious crimes. And they were crying. And uh, the MPs, are, they take this personally. They were very upset by this. So they take them by the bus and they take them into the new facility and they walked around and they said, this is very nice. <laughs> How much do we have to pay to stay here? Hey. So it's a different way of uh, thinking for them. Can you tell us how the riot happened here? There was a riot here in which a prisoner was shot, wasn't there? In Abu Ghraib. Uh, if there was, I'm not familiar with it. And you've uh, been here for how long, General Kapinski? Since May. I think it would have been sometime in early May, perhaps just before you came here. Captain Armstrong, was there a uh, riot here at Abu Ghraib and a prisoner was shot? Uh, earlier, uh, were they actually in the facility in the heart stand? They were. Was there, was he trying to escape? There, there was uh, an attempt to, Captain Armstrong was here at the time, he said that there was a, uh, they used the tent poles from the tents, rushed the guards, and uh, they tried to subdue the prisoners with non lethal force and then had to uh, resort to, to we're detaining a large group of uh, individuals uh, that the security and intelligence people still have to interview. And I apologize for not making more of these because this is really uh, a picture, you know, tells a thousand words. By the 31st of December of this year, uh, this is the locations where we'll have our, uh, the different prisons in Iraq. Now, the, uh, the brown blocks, the tan block like this, is a, uh, means that it's under military control. In other words, the, the, the facility here, what we call Gansi, will never be turned over to the Iraqis because that's not the way that they detain people. That is a, um, <coughs> a, a hasty confinement operation. It's triple strand concertina wire, and we have the military police personnel to <coughs> manage that kind of an operation. Blocks in blue are the prisons that will be uh, under construction or not completed, or hopefully under contract by the 31st of December. And the ones in uh, black um, are open prisons or confinement facilities, and the ones in red will be open and contribute to that total number by the 31st of December. General. What we're in the process of doing now is um, continuing the interview process uh, to see if we can get any more information. These are security details. Right. And they, the details become sketchy or their story changes. Are you present in any of these intelligence interviews? No. Are the military police present or are the intelligence officers on their own? No, it's a uh, combined effort. The military intelligence uh, people do the actual interrogation yeah. or interview and the military police uh, escort the detainees there. Are they, they in the room when the, when the interview takes place? I do not believe they are. I think the interrogation process is complete and separate apart from the uh, security detention. Well, they're, they're moving away more and more from the old uh, way of doing things. 
Do we still have uh, incidents where they take a bribe or, uh, or take money from a family member? Sure we do. Um, they're going to make mistakes, they're going to fall down, we're going to pick them up, tell them the right way to do it, and hopefully they will. Uh, and, uh, and the next time it won't be the same situation. It's, it's not a clear road yet, but it's, uh, it's changed dramatically from where the coalition had 75% influence and the Iraqis had 25%. And I could safely say now it's more than a 50-50 responsibility and moving very rapidly towards 75% of Iraqi control and 25% of coalition control. Uh, we have Iraqis here running the, the prison. We could continue the yeah. tour. And the bakery is under construction back here, and they're still working, or we could take you back there to take some pictures of it. And, and uh, I talked to the Iraqi in there this morning who's going to run that kitchen, and he is very proud of what they've done. He's very proud of how it looks, and he knows that uh, he's, he's a participant in this, uh, and they want to do it the right way. We're going to move over to the medical facility now across the hall. Uh, Reports from people that were in this facility or had affiliation with this facility tell us that some of those small rooms in the hallway were actually used for medical experimentations or medical torture. Um, but there's light at the end of the tunnel, literally. We'll walk down the, the darkest hallway in this facility and then uh, make a left turn and you'll see the medical facility, which is a success story in itself. Very good medical equipment, one of the best medical equipment we received from the Ministry of Health. You will never remember the past. You will never remember the bath party. No, no, no. Were any of your other doctors? Were any of the doctors here bath party members? Yes, yes. Well, I, when I speak to the prison, they are happy to have such kind of treatment. It's my concern. I speak to them how good the treatment. They, they, they say they never have such nice good treatment especially those prison some of them from the previous was in the same prison yeah. what were some of the worst things that happened to prisoners here under the previous regime i think tortures yeah. torture to death yes tortures not to have time they must follow orders and they must pay too too much money to have a bed to have a good food to have a visiting a special visits yeah, so you, have, tortures, tortures you must every day. pay for everything you want in the jail, everything. Even to walk outside your room, you must pay. What, what, what sort of torture, uh, what sort of methods of torture could you see from your medical treatment and how badly hurt would you? Well, the simple type, you just hang his leg up and uh, uh, on his leg. Break his leg? Yes. Yeah. What about electric cables and that kind of thing? No, 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 not here. No. No, not here. asked you this when I was in here but you have a special training program now for Iraqi prison guards Yes. and how long has that been going on and what does it consist of? They started the training program about uh, five weeks ago and the uh, military police wrote the program of instruction 
They, their focus in the first couple of days is very heavily uh, geared towards human rights and humane treatment of prisoners uh, and, and handling them the appropriate ways, uh, searching them the appropriate ways, and using the right procedures to process uh, detainees or uh, people that have been arrested. Let's take another quick shot. There are no reports of any kind of fair or favorable treatment in, on this side of the facility or on the other side, which is actually the hanging chamber. Now, many times people ask, uh, what happened to the bodies? And we don't know. Uh, for the number of uh, people who were uh, executed in this facility, there are no records and there is no evidence of them being uh, buried on this, uh, on the grounds of Abu Ghraib. And of course, there's no direction of where they went. There are facilities that are building out back where they uh, were probably refrigerated uh, facility where they were held until they were carted off and, um, and buried or disposed of in some way. There is uh, very good information that prior to them being hung, if they had not complied with the uh, request to say that they followed the Ba'athist party or Saddam Hussein's direction, that they were tortured yet again uh, in here in an effort to extract that final uh, obligation. We, Captain Armstrong, uh, and his soldiers have put the uh, pathos back in. And the letter here, uh, it, it dropped and obviously they, they were hung. In the cases where the hanging was not complete, unfortunately below, they were cut from the rope and then they were taken into the gas chamber, uh, which is just underneath where I'm standing now. So I'm gonna flip the lever on this uh, door so you can hear, we say that it's the death but it's loud and it is uh, particularly loud. 